Norm Rosen from RV Lifestyle Magazine in beautiful London, Ontario, with Andy Thompson, our Hitchens guru from Can-Am RV. Andy is one of the top Airstream dealers in Canada. And Andy, we are in the brand new Airstream Base Camp larger model. Yeah, yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? This is beautiful. Now, if we were in the older model, we would be sitting in the kitchen right now. That's right. And you know, it's uh, funny when they first brought it out back in 2018, I said there, I said, you know, it's really too small. It needs to be a little bit larger. Uh, well, I was wrong because it quickly became one of their best selling models. Yes. Now in the US, a lot of people thought that was all they could tow. They came in here to look at it and we generally, they were driving something that we could set up to tow a larger one. So it wasn't quite as big a seller for us, but we sold quite a few, you know, very ingenious use of space and storage and everything and very, very easy to tow. But finally they've come out with an extended one. So big difference here is you've got your dinette where we're sitting, but you still have a sleeping area at the back that you can leave made up if you want to, uh, but also gives a bunch of living space when you, when you don't. And uh, it is about the easiest towing trailer that I've towed that you can stand up in. It's mm -hmm. very, very uh, aerodynamic. The old uh, 16, we, we towed around with a Kia Soul with a 1.6 liter and a six speed manual just to see if we could do it. And it was amazingly how well that towed. We towed a lot of miles with it. Um, and this isn't quite as easy as the 16, but very, very close to it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we have it hooked on the Tesla here today. And it's almost the ideal trailer for a Tesla just because of the aerodynamics of it. Yeah, and the size and the weight, and this this runs uh, what about uh, thirty nine hundred pounds? Thirty four hundred. Thirty four hundred. Yeah, dry, and dry weight, but that includes <clears> propane <throat> batteries, which you know a lot of trailer specs never include that. Um, and when they say it's twenty foot, it's the overall length is twenty feet two inches. It's not called a twenty and actually twenty four feet long. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're length so that's the overall from the the very front of the hitch to the very back to the very back of the trail yeah 20 feet and we're seven foot six inches wide at the widest point mm -hmm. now of course it tapers on both ends and that's what creates the uh, the aerodynamics of it the aerodynamics yes yeah. and it uh yeah so i'm really impressed with it it's uh i think it'll be a great uh, great unit for a lot of people mm -hmm. now this <coughs> this is a compact uh, travel trailer but suitable for family yep. so you can you can sleep one maybe two kids in, yeah this in is the a front. 43 inch bed so two kids or one adult two kids one adult at the back you've got essentially uh, two uh, adult sized beds yeah or that or people or, go in and that becomes all bedroom back there yeah it can yeah. become like like king size almost back yeah. there although tapers yeah. at the end and uh, we could we haven't done it yet but we actually could put a bunk bed across a front here as well uh, well that's interesting yeah the um the airstream bunks are um well, i call them the airstream bunks they don't make them anymore but we still do and they're uh, like the bed on the submarine mm -hmm. they're uh, an aluminum frame with a canvas in them so yeah. they're very light and mm -hmm. we can suspend because of the structure of the airstream we can suspend them just about anywhere isn't that interesting and so so it's more like a hammock sort of thing it's a hammock held on four sides and interesting if, and if you ever toured a world war ii submarine that's what the beds were like in the submarine that's where wally Byam got the idea got the idea yeah. so they weigh about eight pounds now <coughs> on some layouts you just throw it back in the bedroom out of the way during the day yeah. on this one if you're using that as living space that might be a bit of an issue but it's actually some umbrella fabric so you could throw it outside if you wanted to you could well <laughs> yeah. the umbrella is uv protective yeah and it uh, doesn't <clears throat> really matter, so. now one of the the real uh, attractive points of the the base camp uh, series is that when you open the back door, you could literally, you could put uh, a 15 foot long uh, kayak. Yeah, bicycles. Uh, bicycles, all kinds of things, right down the center aisle of the trailer. We've done a couple where we put claw brackets for bike yes. ports just inside mm -hmm. the back door. So you can wheel a bike in, clamp it down, and it just sits there and rides, no problem at yeah. all. It's, so there's, yeah, lots of flexibility with this design, that's for sure. 
Yeah, amazing. Uh, now, of course, you've got the uh, Airstream construction quality throughout. Yes, typical Airstream construction, aluminum framework, uh, aluminum skin on the inside and the outside. So both skins are torsion, so it makes it very strong without yeah. adding a whole lot of weight. And then allows all these shapes that make it toe well. That mm -hmm. gives you that flexibility. And of course, Airstreams stay on the road for generations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So when when the people are looking at this vehicle now, this vehicle is in the what seventy five, seventy seven thousand range. Yeah, Canadian. It's pretty close to that. Yeah. Uh, depending upon, of course, how it's equipped. Uh, so people may balk. They may say, "Whoa, you know, that's that's a fair amount of money for a small trailer." Yeah, but when they consider the longevity of the vehicle, yeah, and it, you know what the resale value would be. Yeah, and if you bought a small Airstream uh, 10 years ago, you're going to sell it today for what you paid for it easily. I would think. It's um, so they tend to hold that now. You know, there's been some inflation in that time, so but I, I would say they probably hold their value as well as anything with wheels. Oh, I would yeah. think, if not yeah. better than the yeah. vast majority of things with wheels. Yeah, yeah. and there's um. Yeah, I suppose there's the odd special Ferrari that's done better, but probably nobody used those. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they only yeah. hold the value of their never driven. Yeah, so you, know, you can they, use it, travel you can use it, and do, do you it. go anywhere with this. Yeah, and you know, one of the nice things about an, air, uh, an Airstream trailer is the simplicity. There's not a whole lot to go wrong. No, so that helps with that longevity. You're not going to run into you know drive line problems or anything like that because you just put a new tow vehicle on and away you go. Uh, the other thing I do kind of like about an Airstream is that you don't, you're not dated by a chassis and a design. So, uh, you know, we're towing with probably the most modern vehicle out there right now, the Tesla. Um, but I could take a 40 year old Airstream and hook it on the Tesla yeah. and have a completely up to date drivetrain and vehicle to take down mm -hmm. the road. So there's a lot of nice things to say about that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Now, <coughs> we're sitting in a, a rural area <coughs> we've got the back door open and the front door open and we have the the lumidome open but the fans off yeah because it was interfering with the microphone it's very pleasantly cool in here you've got very good airflow yeah through the vehicle uh which is unusual actually for a trailer yeah. uh, and i guess that's because of the You've got two different axes at 90 degrees with the two doors open. Yeah, and then we have the side wind doors, side windows, the side windows as well, which as well. have a huge screen area on each yes. of those. But it's, um, part of it's that, part of it's the silver reflects the heat. Yes. So you're not absorbing heat the same mm -hmm. as you would on others. And of course the windows are all tinted. Uh, so the funny, on an Airstream, if you're Canadian, you probably don't use the air conditioning very much. No. If you're going south in the summertime, of course, that's a different thing. But most Canadians go south in the winter. They're here in the uh, in the summer, so you don't tend to use it a lot because of the, of the way they're ventilated. Yeah. There's um, uh, the other thing that's nice about this. This is a um, I wouldn't say it's a four season trailer, but it's very close to it. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, if you wanted to go to Florida in January, you could, unless it was extreme cold, you could go ahead put water in this, put the heating systems on, you know, the tanks are enclosed and heated, and you could be traveling to Florida and using all your, your water systems. Oh yeah, because you're not going to freeze uh, unless it goes yeah. well 40 below. Yeah, it's not all exposed outside. <coughs> and uh, the uh, interesting, they have a suburban tankless water heater, uh, but uh, what I kind of like about that unit is the coils and everything aren't exposed outside. That water heater is completely enclosed inside the unit. There's just a small round vent. So it doesn't have the potential to freeze as quickly as a typical tankless uh, water heater mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. So the aerodynamic aspect of the the uh, front section of the trailer that, that encloses the gas bottles and also protects all of your equalizer hitch uh, hookups. Uh, that's very attractive and that's for aerodynamics but also protects everything underneath it. You know, but uh, when you take a look at the sophistication of a vehicle that we're sitting in like this, yeah. this, this is uh, literally, this is the future. Uh, yeah, I think uh, for a lot of people it is. Yeah. I think in time. You know, so uh, if people are thinking about an RV, 
at this stage, we're in the, in the summer of 2021. If you're thinking about an RV in the summer of 2021, you might actually pick it up in time for the summer of 2022. But it's a good idea to do your research and to give some very serious thought to what you need. A lot of people will pick up an RV that's not the ideal size or not the ideal floor plan. And what I usually recommend to our readers when they call up, they say, well, what do you think I should do? I suggest that they go visit an RV dealer, form a relationship with an RV dealer in their area who they feel they can trust yep. and who's going to actually take into consideration the needs of their family. And then you, you spend 15, 20 minutes, half an hour inside the various RV layouts and think, if we actually had to cook dinner in here, if we were going to entertain our friends in here, if we wanted to have some people over and, and watch the Super Bowl inside the RV or on the patio and watch on one of the big exterior screens, does the layout work? Yeah. And, and you also have to think, you know, in a lot of RVs, people can get a little bit of cabin fever. They can get a little claustrophobic. When you're in an RV, like this one is a great example, when you've got big windows and you've got a long, uh, a long range of vision from one end of the RV to the other, it doesn't feel at all like a small RV. Yeah, and it's, um, and the only thing I would add to that is sometimes think of the long term and the total package a little bit. So, so people would look at the price of this at 70 some thousand dollars and go, holy cow. But the one big advantage is probably whatever you're driving will tow this. You don't yes. need to go out and buy a special vehicle. So um, you can buy a uh, $40,000 trailer, but then go spend $30,000 on a dedicated tow vehicle for oh, yes. that. Or more. Yeah. And in 10 years, this will probably have most of its value. Yes. The dedicated tow vehicle in 10 years won't be worth much, much. And the less expensive, less well-built trailer will probably have lost a lot of value. So it can be, if you kind of look at the whole picture, sometimes you can get mm -hmm. something a lot more uh, cost-effective. Oh, absolutely. And when you're thinking, you know, a vehicle like the Airstream, there's nothing in here to deteriorate Not over time. time. They, they Nothing's stay. going to rust. Yeah. There, There's nothing that the insects are going to eat. Yeah. You know, and uh, you're looking at a vehicle that could easily last wow. 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below.